I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Uh, Peter Cascone is with me today. Peter is an artist and an entrepreneur, and he's involved in the music scene. Um, he's got a, a, an incredible new uh, new venue that we're going to talk a little bit about later. Um, but welcome, Peter. Thanks for coming Thank today. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I got to know you through the uh, uh, Artist Open Studio Tour, uh, which you started participating in a couple of years ago. Yeah, I was very excited about that because um, for many years I was creating art, uh, both in an apartment and, you know, I've sort of, a, I had a, a space to do it, but it was like in my, where I lived. And uh, since I moved to Amenia or was able to have a studio here in uh, in Amenia about s six years ago. I, I, that was uh, that that was a whole awakening for me because all of a sudden I could work on a couple of things at once. Mm -hmm. I could just leave them there, you know. Uh, I could work on big things. I could saw things, and and I especially liked working with uh, panels of wood. Uh, when I lived in Manhattan, I lived in a converted commercial space on 19th Street and Broadway in the Flatiron District, what it was called wasn't that yet. It was uh -huh. just some place between Chelsea and Gramercy Park. And there were a lot of photography studios because, you know, the first wave when there is empty space is photographers and artists and dancers, everybody who has no money but, you know, or very little and takes over these spaces. So at night it was like lightning flashes. But anyway, there was a lot of pieces of sets laying around on the street. They literally would shoot stuff and then chop it up and I couldn't stand to see that. <laughs> they it was would like just like beautifully leave it out mounted, you know, uh, art uh. card just like framed and, and thrown out in dumpsters and things. So I dragged it up to where I lived and I started painting on that stuff. Box covers, uh, anything, any flat surface and uh, uh, and I found that uh, and I was working in advertising at the time and I had a very stressful job. I was a producer which is, you know, everything is your fault. Uh, and you have to push people around who don't want to be pushed around. So, um, so it was a stressful job. So in order to basically relax and escape from that, I started painting. I had no tradition of art in my family, really. My cousin kind of taught me photography. But then I was married at the time, and my mother-in-law was um, uh, a very fine artist. And I also, when I went to NYU to study uh, filmmaking, I wanted something easy, so I studied <laughs> modern art. And, and that really had an effect. I mean, it really opens your mind up to an abstraction way of looking, an abstracted way of looking at the world, which is totally free, uh -huh. you know, because I was in this narrow corporate thing. So I could just be and do whatever I wanted in this little realm. And my mother-in-law was very supportive. She was a very fine artist. She was an art students league, sort of, uh, you know, public works, uh, the the WPA sort of that era. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I know she wasn't famous in yeah. that sense, but she actively painted all the time. And she just gave me some basic ideas, like I was trying to draw the room. And she said, no, don't, don't draw the room, just draw the chair, and, you know, and start with the chair. And that was, yeah, that was like a great concept. And she encouraged me, you know, she said, you know, you have a natural style, don't, don't try and learn technique because you'll you'll ruin it oh really so i took that to heart yeah. yeah so i tried to to learn how to draw which i can now f i feel comfortable you know drawing something if i go somewhere i can kind of draw the palm trees and you know but uh really the, the what where the art comes from is more this basically a desire to be provocative on some level to first of all do whatever i want and to have some kind of provocative edge on it because I'm a very controlled, you know, sort of straightforward person. I'm not provocative in stuff that I do in my life, you know. I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't belong to any causes or anything like that. So the art is my sort of uh, rebellious thing. Mm -hmm. And part of it is not really learning much technique, but just creating a lot of art all the time, as much as possible. Yeah. And you don't limit what I, I mean, I've seen you work with uh, chalk on cardboard, and and um, you work on metal, and and just you, you just seem to be able to pick up things and make art out of it, or or create something out of it. Well, I literally see art in a lot of things. That's part of the abstraction, you know, learning about abstract art and and how there's art all around us, and you, if you just you know if you make something sacred, if you take the thing and you 
put it on the wall, it becomes sacred, and now it has a meaning, and it is, you know, in some way art. And that doesn't only go so far, obviously, but, but, uh, so, but a lot of the things, like also like taking the box cover, the box cover becomes a surface that becomes art, mm -hmm. you know. And also I was fascinated early on in, in studying art with this uh, wooden panel from Pompeii, you know, that was painted with a caustics, and caustics, which is a, you know, a type of uh, wax. Yeah. And this wooden panel was one of the few paintings as such, you know, there's a lot of uh, murals and things and, and mosaics that survived, but almost nothing that was painted on, on paper or, or cloth survives, you know, very little of it. So I thought, this thing is so ancient, so I thought, well, I'm going to paint on panels with acrylics, and my works will last Just forever. last forever. You know, you can throw them in the ocean. In yeah. fact, I have a painting in front of my gallery, that my studio, that it's just sitting out in the weather, and I'm just oh, really? watching it, and it's doing fine. Yeah. And that was actually wood that I, st I started purchasing wood because I couldn't find enough and laying around. So yeah. I started it's, You know, it's interesting that you're doing that because I know an artist who, who has a sacred art burial ground, and she'll take her work and put it out in the woods, and, and it's, it's like this one crazy place with w where all this stuff it's is. It's all melting. Yeah, yeah. And it's all decaying, it's going back to nature. and, and yeah. um, you know sometimes she'll pull a piece back in and rework it and do stuff on it. But it's it's I, I can't imagine what a person is it, would I mean, is it think. buried or is it actively? No. It's, no. it's it's changing. It's yeah. evolving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In nature. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I when I, when I got the studio, which was really a rack, it was like a garage workshop. There was a piece of furniture in it, like an armoire, a, a cupboard, and I dragged it outside and I let that melt. You know, just <laughs> fell apart from the sun and the rain yeah. and everything. But the, one of the front doors was this beautiful beveled edge panel, and and I, I did my I started painting in oils because now I could walk away from the studio and not be poisoned. So uh, I started painting in oils, and I painted a, a a portrait on that panel in oils, and I was really like, wow, that's really. <laughs> and it was a piece of wood that was the front panel, the yeah. door of the yeah. cupboard. So for me, that had it was better that way. I don't know, rather than buying a canvas. Yeah. I mean, I bought canvases. Too. Yeah. Well, we have this piece here behind us um, that you did on metal and, and, and put in a wooden frame. How did, how did you get well, to this? Well, this is bizarre, of course. Uh, it, it originally was a piece that the, the metal is a piece of roofing it's, or, or ceiling. I think it's, it's ceiling, actually. And uh, it was laying around the studio and it had a hole in it and it was crumpled. And it just looked like uh, I w I'm involved in my professional life with a show called Inside Martial Arts, which is all about kickboxing and stuff uh -huh. like that, which I don't do, yeah. Yeah. but uh, I, I know about it. Anyway, so this looked like a kickboxer to me for some reason, and it was laying around, and then I, um, I was asked to participate in the show uh -huh. at um, Patterson. So I got this thing out, and I, and I had painted it red before that, but I, I, I framed it, basically, and that piece of wood is part of a box, you know, and, and the gaffer's tape is, again, like, I don't care. That, you know, I mean, it wasn't meant to be rude. It's just that yeah. it worked, you know. Yeah, right. It works. It's like, I don't care what it is. There's no rules here. So that's it. The, the gaffer's tape worked. And then when I, put the when I put the piece of metal in the frame and put a little paper behind it, 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 it didn't look right. You know, it's like it wasn't, it didn't have actually the engaging stare that I like and to, to do, yeah. like to use. It's like looking at you, engaging you, maybe even making you uncomfortable, you know. But anyway, so um, I put the eye on it because this is supposed to be evil, uh -huh. as you know. And I had other pictures that were, were good, which I didn't bring this time. But anyway, so I wanted to add this, the engaging stare. And then I felt also that the, the whole eye there, the original hole, was sort of the brutal brutish eye that was primitive, primitive evil, you know, that's unknowing, basically, you know. Yeah. Uh, more, uh, you know, uh, just brutal. And then the other eye is supposed to represent the calculating cold, which is much more frightening, of course. Yeah, yeah. Calculating cold eye of evil that understands that it's evil. Yeah. You know, the other one doesn't really know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an interesting piece. Um, so let's talk about some good that you're doing. <laughs> oh, okay, right, right. I know, and and you know they are a little strange, but um, it's that's 
part of it is to be a little provocative. Which is but great. I, and actually, you, you said that in your business life, you don't feel you're provocative. No. I, you come across to me as kind of a provocative person. I do? You do, and, and a person who's doing things and well, has a lot of interest. Well, active is different than provocative. And, I don't yeah. provoke people. I yeah. mean, I think I will confront people. Yeah. Or, but almost always, you know, I, 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 I pride I'm, myself on being diplomatic. No, no, you know? no. I, it, not in a harsh way. I ah. don't mean, I mean, in, you're interesting. Proactive. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, and one of the really interesting things, another thing that you're working on right now is the Amenia Music Hall, right. Right. which is um, a brand new music venue in Amenia. Well, I mean, I guess you could make the extension from that I don't like to see things go to waste, like the pieces of wood, you know. So, and also I have this pre pre preservationist background because the Flatiron District, there was a loft in the building. People would know it across the street from ABC Carpet or something like that, right on the corner of 19th Street. Anyway, so that was a classic building built uh, before the turn of the century. And I saw it as, you know, also part of it was like being an artist and wanting a garret, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I could pretty much paint there. Yeah. And I was encouraged by my mother-in-law who would otherwise say, how could you bring my daughter into this warehouse mm. and expect her to, you know, wash in a map, mop basin for a year? But she was an artist, so she said, oh, this is great, you have a garret, you know. So that was helpful. But I m became part of a co-op that turned this building that was a classic, beautiful Queen Anne-style limestone and brick building, which was, you know, a warehouse, basically into a landmark yeah. over the course of about 20 years. And in that process, I learned all about, you know, uh, community boards and building departments and seeds of O's and right, yeah, all yeah. that stuff that comes with trying to take something, and, you know, through proper means and turn it into something else. So when I saw the Amenia Auditorium from the old school there, I immediately, the minute I saw it, I said, this is like a beautiful little theater here. Mm -hmm. It should be something. Why is it just sitting here? You know. Yeah, it has the vintage seats and and the yeah. chandeliers and. It's a and nice size. Beautiful It has windows. the advantage, which I pointed out a couple of times to people, that as opposed to uh, an old uh, legit movie theater that is encrusted with stuff that's hard to fix and repaint. Yeah. Uh, they have nothing. It's very a Methodist kind of room. You know, <laughs> it's the original. It's true. It's right, not fancy. Right? And yeah. It's, it's a. And, and, and appropriate, I think, because in these austere times, it'd be a lot harder to fix up. Well, you need some curtains in there. Right. And you've got a pretty modern theater, actually. You've got a right. cinema. Right. cinema. Right. So, and and um, um, I'm going to rush you because we only have a minute left. Oh. So, um, the Amenia Music Hall is a new music venue that's going <laughs> to, uh, that we're going to have another performance on June 1st. We're trying to figure out the program now with my associate, Joan Daydone, who I always give credit mm -hmm. to helping me get that started. She's been, you know, does put the, all the media stuff together. And, uh, and I think that uh, the town has responded extremely well. They understood that art and entertainment is good for business mm -hmm. and that I've, I've, my whole pitch has always been to make a media a destination. Yes. And I think that can be part of it. And there's plenty of room in there for art to be shown, which is what happened at the last performance. Right, Cindy Snow's group has artwork yeah. up on the wall. and. Yeah. Um, and you and Bill Prickett shot a little uh, documentary. Which we was, did video, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, there's a whole opportunity there for all kinds of arts to happen. And, uh, you know, okay. I haven't really done Peter, much. Shut I'm up. gonna okay. cut you off. Um, okay. So people can learn more about it on, on uh, the fa your uh, Facebook Amenia, page. Amenia Music Hall yeah. dot com. Right, okay. And also a uh, Facebook page. So and we hope you. you'll visit it, and we'll hope you come to the shows. Can right. I look over there? That's, hope that's you'll come it. to the show. So that, that's it for today. Thanks a lot, oh, Peter. So I really you. appreciate your coming here and telling us about the music hall. Um, I hope everybody gets up to it, checks them out on Facebook, and uh, we'll be looking forward to it. Sure will. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.